So former Linus Media Group social media manager Madison Reeves came forward and talked about her experiences working at Linus Media Group. And uh, they weren't good. They were real bad. There's a big thread on Twitter that she posted. Let's get into it. Skip it up and that up. So in case you've been living under a tech rock, I'm pretty sure if you're watching my channel, you know what's going on with Linus Media Group. Uh, Gamers Nexus, Steve, the man with amazing hair, uh, called them out on grave inaccuracies in a ton of their videos. They also talked about what happened with Billet Labs and they... Linus got a custom expensive water block to re review and they didn't hook up the proper graphics card to it. Go watch my other video. It it it's there's so much that Linus media group and Linus tech tips did wrong in the videos and so many other things it, for me to reiterate it here. This video would be 60 minutes long. So go watch that video. Go, there'll be like a thing up here or whatever Jay will do. Top pin comment or Jay will tattoo the link to the video on his left ass cheek. Anyway, go watch it so you understand the context because there's a lot to digest. And even the video I made yesterday to not make the video be seven hours, I had to cut some corners. Well, Madison Reeve, who was the social media manager there, keyword was, who's also a Twitch live streamer, content creator, uh, she decided to tell her story about what it was like working at LMG, and this is what she had to say. Buckle up. There's a lot. Get your coffee. Get your bird. We're going to go into it. I'll have a link to her Twitter below in the description. So there's that. YouTube, it's just a link to someone's Twitter profile who used to work for Linus Media Group. Don't strike me. It's called Actually Citing Sources. Thank you. To stop the speculation and DMs I am receiving, I chose to quit my role at Linus Tech Tips because it and the working environment I was facing were ruining my mental health. The number of daily items the social media role at the time was expected to fill was incredibly high. I was expected to post three tweets, two Instagram posts, and two TikToks minimum per day. I was also expected to plan, film, edit, and post two float plane exclusives per week. This included wrangling people to be in them when they were also all struggling to get their work done. I was also expected to manage, plan, come up with, execute, get approval for, and schedule out all the sponsored content on socials, not including YouTube, all while being told not to complain because my job was the, quote, fun job. I cannot speak on what it's like now, but they have an entire team working on seemingly what I was expected to accomplish alone. I misspoke originally when I had stated I had signed an NDA. I thought the employee handbook acted as one. I am not a lawyer. I never publicly made any statements regarding my time there because I feared even more backlash from a community that was already attacking, defaming, and sending me death threats. I also feared for my future in this career given that LTT is large and has industry connections. My time at the company has brought my mental health to an all-time low. You could talk to anyone who has been around me during my employment, and they would confirm it. I would not recommend anyone I know to work there, especially with my experience as a woman in the office. I was consistently belittled by certain members of upper management. My work was called dog shit. I was called incompetent. When I would reach out to managers and try to get help with those situations, I would be told to put on my big girl pants and be more assertive. Eh, well, it sounds like every other typical corporation, which means it's terrible. It doesn't matter if you think I am or I am not stupid. This behavior is not appropriate. After enough complaints from me, I was pulled into a meeting. In that meeting, the writer's room was pointed to and I was asked, do you think any of these people would have a hard time getting a job? I said no. Keep in mind, this was about a month into working there. I was then pointed to and asked, what about you? I was scared. I remember asking, are you going to fire me? I was laughed at and told, stop being so pessimistic as if my job and ability hadn't just been vaguely threatened. I was then asked to agree to a verbal no drama contract. The verbal part is important. 
In this moment, I realized I was no longer considered part of the team. I was now a threat because I was putting up a fuss when I believed I was being treated unfairly and inappropriately. This verbal agreement wasn't right. It was a behind-the-scenes warning with no record. A warning that came shortly after I had come forward stating I had been inappropriately grabbed multiple times in the office amongst other issues. I was barred in being more videos, so when you ask what happened, why wasn't she in more content, this is why. And there's an asterisk to that that I have to say if you're wondering why she brings that up. Madison, the woman talking here, was in Linus Tech Tips fifth most watch video. Channel with over 15 million plus subscribers who uploads 25 plus videos a week. She was in the fifth most watch one. But yet for some reason they wouldn't have her in other videos. Like you may not want to believe her here, but that doesn't add up. There is this perplexing fear that people will leave Linus Tech Tips and start their own thing if given a platform. So if that platform could threaten negative things coming out about your company or you, you'd probably want to squash it too. In my experience, there is a belief that everything you accomplish, no matter how much it is created by your own effort, is actually due to Linus giving you a platform. This is what I was told when I moved from Arizona to Vancouver to take this job. Oh, wow. He sounds like every other CEO that has an ego. Guess it got to your head a little bit, dude, huh? Long ways from when you were working at NCIX. After it was publicly announced by Linus that he was hiring me without my knowledge or consent to that situation, and also before I was even offered the job or shown the salary, I agreed and signed the employment contract, which, Madison, I'm going to say this right now, that's on you. <laughs> like, you don't look over the contract before you, okay, all right, well, continuing on. I had been asked and been told during my interviews that I would be allowed to monetize my YouTube channel and be allowed to join Floatplane in exchange for shutting down my Patreon. Once I moved, I was presented with an entirely new contract slash handbook that I was not told existed. It detailed that I was given incorrect information and would actually have to make changes to my plans if I wanted to continue being employed at LTT. This was after I had moved entire countries and given up my visa status. I couldn't just go back. Some corrections were made as apologies for the miscommunication, but I was still upset. I later went to Linus about this and stated that the effort to remediate the situation wasn't sitting right with me. He told me perhaps I should change my priorities. He was, in this instance, referring to the fact that my brother had suddenly passed away not even a week before I moved for this job and that perhaps I should just ignore that I had been misled because that was more important. I cannot tell you how upset I felt in this moment. That's absolutely Wow. Okay. Um, holy crap. Continuing on, the opportunities LTT presented to me were nothing in comparison to the day-to-day -day issues I faced. It did not matter if I spoke to someone with evidence of an abuse of power or inappropriate workplace behavior. It was considered tattletaling. I was actually called a tattletale. That's what a group of adults should say to each other. Again, I know this is hearsay, but... I don't really know why you would come out with this if you weren't telling the truth, even with what's going on with Linus Media Group and Gamers Nexus exposing them. But mm, no, I, I, I believe her. I believe her. It wouldn't be worth it to lie about this because you would get absolutely destroyed. <laughs> so unless she's a masochist, I, I think she's telling the truth. Continuing on. I was told I was bossy when I was trying to be assertive, like I was asked to do. I was told I was arguing when I was trying to discuss my point of view. I was told to calm my tits, stop being such a bitch, and other comments to similar effect. There were numerous instances of misinformation being given to me purposely to negatively impact my work. I only know this because coworkers would tell me they overheard the actual information I should have been given. It felt like a horrible teenage drama movie. Welcome to cor any corporation, whether it's Linus Media Group or 
working in corporate offices at Macy's, I, I've worked in those settings. If you, if you think that adults are actually adulting, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Work from home was a whole issue. If you took three minutes to answer a personal email, you could get in trouble. Happened to me. There is a system of micromanaging and a level of distrust because the amount of content they have to push out daily is so insane, no one gets a break. I remember getting told off for taking my sick days as in the days you know, you're entitled to. This no days off grind set culminated in the real moment I realized I had to leave. I purposely cut my leg open so badly I would have to go to the ER to get it stapled back together. It was genuinely the only way in my mind to take a day off without being harassed for a reason why. Wow. I had spoken to managers about how I was struggling and how the workload was too much for one person, but I was belittled and told you just have bad time management skills. This is why I'm so glad I work for myself, but continue. There are so many instances that led up to that moment. Some of them I have replayed over and over asking myself, what did I do wrong? How could I have changed the situation? But I don't think I could have. I was not treated fairly. And in the moment, I couldn't even see that because I was told I was the problem by people I had looked up to for years. I had coworkers come up to me saying, I didn't like how you were treated. Glad you got out. And only then I realized it wasn't me. I haven't shared any of this besides with my closest friends and family because I couldn't at the time take any more hits to my mental health. I couldn't deal with how small and worthless a job had made me feel all to push out some mediocre crap posts. I am still scared of what the response will be since I am a woman and have already been called dramatic. I'm not stating what happened to me because I am seeking clout. I'm stating it because it has been eating away at me for two years. There are genuinely amazing, compassionate, and incredibly intelligent people who work at this company and are driven to just share cool tech they love. It sucks that ego and bottom line are slowly destroying some of them and hurting the entire reputation of the company. I didn't ever want to say anything for fear of hurting those people and their employment, but at this point I am hurting myself keeping this all in while also being kind constantly bombarded with questions about LTT and jokes made at my expense. I have been patient and tried to ignore these comments, but some of you don't understand the mental anguish and nights of crying, feeling like I did something wrong and ruined my life that I had to go through. This was my dream job. I was at my dream job and they spoke to me like I was nothing. I can't express to you how worthless I felt. They seem to hire young people who don't know any better for some roles, and they get away with this over and over. This wasn't just a dream job. It is a dream job. There are so many more stories of horrible things and shows of ego that I witnessed while working there, but I just needed to get out at least some of what I experienced because it has been two years and every day. I see people speculate is another day I'm forced to feel small. Also meant to add, yes, the Glassdoor review was me. It was, at the time, the only way I felt I could safely express anything that had happened. Since any time I had previously tried, I would be crucified by fans sticking up for who they loved. The thing said by Linus about talking to management and HR and promises about how things are handled internally were a gross misrepresentation of what actually goes on behind those doors. I remember he posted this in response to people speculating something wrong had happened to me. And if you read it, it pretty much says, no one has come out against us, therefore we have done nothing wrong. And this is what it says. And this is written by Linus. For obvious reasons, there won't be an official statement disclosing private details about my dealings with any of our current or former staff. You and Reddit can stop asking. On a separate note, no NDA or other agreement can prevent a Canadian from reporting workplace mistreatment, including, but not limited to, harassment, discrimination, or unlawful termination. They can post it publicly, submit a statement to the authorities, or do both for good measure. As long as it was true, 
it wouldn't be defamatory. If I'm actually accused of a crime or other misdemeanor, including any violation of employment law, I'm sure you'll be able to read all about it in Dexerto. For now, it appears that we are in the clear. That's an awfully prickish way to put it. Oh, all right. When I read this, I was fuming with upset because what a dick thing to post when you're at least partially aware of the treatment your employee was getting from your higher ups. But I don't know what I expected from someone who would mock others for not knowing who they were. Oh, no. I hope that's just hearsay and not true. Linus, don't tell me you pulled it. Do you know who I am? Oh, no. Oh, God. I'm just going to take that as hearsay. Let's continue. I was asked about my sexual history, my boyfriends, how I like to, can't say it here. I was told that certain issues were sexual tension and I should just take the coworker out on a coffee date to ease it out. Oh my God. I was asked to twerk for a coworker at one point. I was told I was chunky, fat, ugly, stupid. I was called a word. I was called the F slur. And at any point I would bring up these comments, I would get told, oh, we will have a chat with them. Nothing ever came of it. The day I handed in my notice was when someone who constantly overstepped me, misled what I was working on and said to me, I think the reason you try to be funny is because you lack any other skills. They smiled and walked away. I quit 15 minutes later. It hurts when people compare where I am now to where I was then because yeah, I had a bigger audience. Yeah, I made more money on Twitch, but I didn't even know if I wanted to exist if the person I had looked up to could treat me and other people I respect like pawns. It sucks because that was what I had worked for. For years, I had tried to get noticed by this big company and this cool guy I respected. Because of this, I was willing to get shit on for that job yelled at and degraded. I was also the one tasked with managing the only fans account, something I said I didn't want to do. I had to read comments from people talking about how they wanted to blank me and my coworkers. I saw people's ha's and hoo ha's. I said no, and I was told only a little longer. If you want to say I'm just hopping on a bandwagon, that's fine. It doesn't take away from the very real experience that I had or that sharing these without current events would have gotten me persecuted for attacking a company most of you until a few days ago thought was perfect. She's right about that. If she came out with this before what Gamers Nexus exposed, she that's why she didn't do it. That there's it's not an excuse, it's the truth. You damn well know if this was pre gamers nexus video it would have been a disaster for her now that people know that there are huge flaws at lmg it's like oh i can actually see this happening yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay makes sense they also forced me to have them as my representation if i wanted to take any other sponsors for my twitch or youtube channels Originally, I had been told, just make sure you okay things by us for non-compete issues. Then that changed when I moved to take the job. They, they corner her then. They lied to her. They got her there. And it's like, yeah, you're stuck in Canada now, so we could do what we want. We could control your sponsors. That's, that's just wonderful. To be clear, this meant I couldn't seek any companies to represent me to brands for sponsorships. Something important for making a living on Twitch or YouTube, but LTT also wasn't doing this for me. They were just going to take any traffic I gained myself, make a deal, and take a cut. I eventually got all the money back that they would have taken when I called out their calculations for the cut they should have been taking were being made before any sort of supplies were reimbursed, even though in the contracts there was a set aside amount of supplies. I am still angry that for a year I was being forced to sit under them while they weren't doing anything a company would do to really represent you. And then somehow a big corporation gets the math wrong on how they should be paying you. For example, a company is paying you 600. 100 they are giving you is specifically to spend on their platform for content. The cut LTT was trying to take was the total 700 and not the 600 that was the actual payment. I had to talk to multiple people before this was rectified. Also, apparently some managers didn't like me because I had gotten drunk with them before. 
which was said in that haha just joking but actually i'm serious tone oh, man after i came forward about being assaulted someone accused linus of inappropriate conduct on twitter he came over to my corner and started berating her calling her insane mentally ill an intention seeker and just digging into this poor woman who had felt wronged by him again that's that one i'm going to go is into hearsay and that's behind the scenes it's another person outside of her and linus it's outside of madison linus media group and you know then we're getting into he said she said she said she said he said he said stuff let's continue though also remember the corner i was in people would sneak up and try to scare me after the incident i was nervous about this and requested a mirror so i could see behind me jesus christ i watched two co-workers get what i had asked for for weeks before they did it took two months to get mine similar things happen whenever i request anything i needed more ram installed on my pc for months because i was expected to edit red footage which is you, you need tons of resources for that i've dealt with it before it took five months and a writer being kind enough to do it for me when the numerous requests i sent in were ignored or put off i would go to management for help and get told i could handle it myself eventually i was pulled into a meeting for insubordination because i had gone around the system for requesting ram after i was ignored for months and dealing with my pc crashing and losing work daily keep in mind i had made 25 dollars of purchase requests in my entire time working at this company i requested this notebook to help my poor time management skills and it was denied and they said you don't need it you have lined paper i was upset and responded back that this was different no then bam another meeting madison why were you rude and non-communicative with this manager i didn't know i was being told no but then i got in trouble because they said they didn't know i was still upset caught to me being at my desk and i get a message saying i didn't know you were still upset you never emailed me back they had lied in front of the big boss to make me look bad and worst of all if i knew i brought this up i would be the one getting reprimanded for tattling because you know it's it's second grade there was also numerous times i was asked why i couldn't just check up on socials or do little jobs during the weekend because it's social media so is it really working imagine telling someone in 2021 social media isn't a real job which is amazing too because linus media group is now a multi-million dollar corporation due to social media and youtube and but whatever okay i'm sure there will be more things i remember and wish i had mentioned in this thread in the coming hours but for now please don't attack individuals who don't actually have power at this company most of them are blameless or powerless to actually change anything also quote why didn't you take legal actions unquote i had just quit my job was scared crapless of this company Felt like I was worthless, and personally, I don't have millions of dollars to throw at legal fees. I said no, unless you make sure you clearly stated that I quit. They then never mentioned it on The Wan Show. Now, I know a lot of you are, are going to become insta-skeptics and say, why didn't she mention this years ago then? Before what happened with Steve over at Gamers Nexus and him exposing all the glaring flaws that happen over at LMG and or LTT, whatever the hell you want to call them, do you think that anybody, she would have been absolutely massacred on social media? They, there was very minimal negativity around Linus Media Group. I mean, there should have been a lot more with the glaring flaws we see we've seen in their reviews and how terrible they've they've treated smaller companies before. But before Gamers Nexus's video, you know what the reaction would have been. You absolutely know. It's, and let's keep it real, especially because she's a female. People, oh, she's just saying, oh, I'm a woman. That's why this is happening. Get woke, go broke, bro. That's why she's coming out with it now, because people are like, like, oh, wait, this company has some really bad things going on behind the scenes. Hmm. Interesting. So now Linus Tech Tips or LMG, whatever the hell you want to call them, they have a video up called What Do We Do Now? Okay. And, and the Taryn Tong, the new CEO of Linus Media Group, uh, is in there. Linus is in there. His wife is in there. They have 
editors and everyone talking about how they're going to, you know, fix things behind the scenes and they're going to have allow the community to audit them and they're taking time off to fix things behind the scenes and that's all well and good and I hope that they do. You know, I I'd like to see this be a wake up call for them. But the thing that's frustrating is that you cannot tell me, especially with after what Madison put out there. You cannot tell me that this was all accidental and Linus had no idea and all the higher ups had no idea over at LMG that all these mistakes were happening. They didn't. You can't tell me that they didn't know about all the, the terrible things going on behind the scenes and, and saying if anyone complains that they're tattletales that they didn't know about this. Look, I know that no company is perfect and human beings work at corporations and human beings do stupid things and terrible things happen behind the scenes because we are all just animals at the end of the day that have to pretend to be superior to animals. <laughs> just, I know that sounds super bleak and pessimistic, but let's keep it real. But what it sounds like Madison went through and Linus's first response being a long drawn out non-apology in a forum post and having to wait to fix these glaring issues when they were happening over and over. It wasn't like, you know, even if it was like two or three videos a month, you know, that there were mistakes made. Yeah, that's not good, but all right, you know, you're putting out so many videos it's not the end of the world. It's still unacceptable, but not the end of the world. But like Steve Burke over at Gamers Nexus said, this is like a fairly regular thing that these glaring mistakes were in your benchmarks and your tests and your reviews. And when you have how many 15.5 million subscribers, you can make or break a company. Even bigger companies can get severely damaged by the misinformation that you were putting in reviews. And it's inexcusable. And the fact that it continued to happen, it's like, oh, no one's really paying attention, so let's just keep going. We'll be the first to have the reviews out and the algorithm will love us. It just kind of shows where your priorities are. Now, I'm not looking to stick up a pitchfork at Linus or hold up a pitchfork, excuse me, at Linus Tech Tips or Linus Media Group. And I'll give him another chance and, and, and see where things go because we all make mistakes and maybe this huge wake-up call will turn the company around but man do they have a lot of work to do behind the scenes and we'll see if they actually do it or if this video was just corporate speak like every other corporation this is rich at review tech usa signing out have a good one